This is Math 142, Section 7.3, Part 1, the first, the first lecture from 7.3. And we're going to look at double angle formulas. Now, the double angle formulas, they aren't necessarily things that we, that we need, um, but they're, they're very convenient. So in this situation, we're given, some situ uh, we're given some parameters, and I know that what I want to find is sine of twice of the angle. I know that sine of the angle is two-thirds. What's sine of twice the angle? Now I can't just double that. Like that's not. If I just doubled that, that would be four thirds. That's bigger than one. It doesn't doesn't make any sense. I'm doubling the rotation. I'm not doubling the uh, the output. I'm not doubling the height. So let's figure out how to get this sine of two x. So I could break this up. I could think of two x as just addition. You know, just x plus x. So if I did it this way, I really wouldn't need a new formula at all. I could just say, I know that sine of x plus x, sine of the first one, cosine of the second one, same, um, same operator, cosine of the first one, sine of the second one. Let me write that out. But I notice that sine x times cosine x and cosine x times sine x are the same thing. You know, these are just multiplied together. So I'm going to change the order of these. I'm going to rewrite this as sine x times cosine x, just because then I'll see that these are identical, sine x cos x, sine x cos x. So if I add those together, I should have two of them. So sine of 2x is the same as 2 times sine x cosine of x. So I'm going to need cosine of x no matter which route I go, if I go this route or that right. But I'm going to need cosine of x. So let me sketch this out so I can get my cosine of x. Sine of x is 2 thirds in quadrant 2. So it's here in quadrant 2. I know it's sine, so I have my height and my hypotenuse, so that's 2, that's 3, or my y and my r. Now I need to figure out that x, so I'll use Pythagorean theorem for that. So it looks like the magnitude of that x value is, is square root of 5. I also know it's going to the left, it's going back, it's in quadrant 2, so it's negative. Sine x is 2 thirds in quadrant 2, cosine x must be negative root 5 over 3. And again, it's negative. The, you know, sketching it out helps me keep track of those um, sines, S-I-G-Ns. So now that I have both sine and cosine of these values, I can use either one of these formulas. I could use the sum one, or I could use this, this double one. And this is, like I said, you don't really need these, but they're so great because this is so much less work than that. Like, it's so much more convenient. So if I'm doubling it, I can just use this. I know that sine of 2x is 2 times sine x cos x. So 2 times sine x two-thirds times cosine of x negative root five-thirds. Now when you do this multiplication, you know, think of this two as a as a two over one, and you just multiply in the fraction. So two times two is four times negative root five, negative four root five over one times three times three, which is ah <laughs> which is nine. So there's uh, sine of two x, that's what it turns out to be. Let's do cosine. And cosine of, of the double angle of, of 2x is going to be a lot like sine of 2x. We're going to figure it the same way. So cosine of 2x, that's cosine of x plus x. So if I did that, that sum expansion, it's cosine of the first one, cosine of the second one, opposite operator, sine of the first one, sine of the second one. So cosine times cosine is cosine squared. Sine times sine is sine squared. Now notice this is this is not cosine squared plus sine squared. If it was that, it would end up being one, but um, it's not. It's it's minus. But thinking about that Pythagorean theorem, I think there's some other options for this. There's some other ways I could write this, and and this is what I mean. I, I know that cosine squared plus sine squared is 1. So let's say I uh, wanted to isolate cosine squared. I could subtract sine squared from both sides. So I know that cosine squared is 1 minus sine squared. That means that I can substitute this in for that. So this cosine squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared. And notice I have minus 2 of them. So I could also write this this way. And what's kind of nice about this is that uh, 
I don't need cosine. Like if I just knew sine and I just wanted to know what the double cosine is, I could plug it right into this equation. I wouldn't even need to use cosine. But they're equivalent. They'll give me the same answer. And there's another one I could do too. Instead of isolating for, for cosine here, I could isolate for sine. So for example, uh, subtract cosine squared from both sides and plug it into that spot. So as we're plugging this one in, we have to be a little bit careful because we're subtracting the whole thing. So that means we're subtracting the one. We're also subtracting the negative cosine squared, so it's adding it. And we have two of these cosine squareds minus one. So what's great about this is to find cosine of 2x, we can use whichever one of these we want. They, they will all be equivalent. They'll all work. And I'm just going to do all three just to show how to use them and, and that they work. So the first one, cosine squared minus sine squared. There's cosine, there's sine. So square them each and subtract. So any negative squared is going to be positive. Root 5 squared is just 5, and 3 squared is 9 minus 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 5 ninths minus 4 ninths is 1 ninth. Great, let me uh, let me do this one. See, see how that one's going to work. 1 minus 2 times sine squared of x, 1 minus 2. I know that sine is 2 thirds, so I'm going to square that. 1 minus 2 times 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9. When I multiply by this 2, you know, think of it as 2 over 1. So this would be 1 minus 8 over 9, which is 1 ninth as well. And I can do this next one then. Give that one a go. 2 cosine squared x minus 1. So 2 of v squared minus 1. A negative squared is positive. Square that to 5. Square that as a 9. And think of this 2 as 2 over 1. So this would be 10 ninths minus 1. And you know, in dealing with these 1s, like I kind of glossed over it here, but I, I just think of that as a 9 ninths. Because it is. <laughs> um, 10 ninths minus 9 ninths is, is 1 ninth. Each of these right here will give me 1 ninth. They're, they're all equivalent to each other. You can just pick which one is, is best for you. And sometimes you just, you'll pick depending on the circumstances. So in this situation, I got this value for sine and this value for cosine. And what I want to do is not necessarily, not necessarily guarantee that what I have is correct, but I'll do a good check. Um, and I think a really good check, since you have your calculator, is sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1 if the input is the same angle. So let's do this on our calculator and set, see if it ends up being 1. So uh, negative 4 root 5. And notice I close off the parentheses for the square root because now I want to go divide by 9. Then I close it off. And I'm going to square that and add it to 1 ninth squared. 1. So it's not proof, but it's pretty good evidence that I'm on, on, that, I'm on the right track with this. That's always a good idea. If you get sine and cosine, just run it through that and just see, you know, if your answer isn't one, something is definitely wrong. How about tangent? Well, I know that tangent sine over cosine. And the one ninths will divide out. It's negative four root five. There's a tangent, double tangent rule as well. And it comes out of that expansion, just like the other ones did. This is the same as tangent of x plus x. And if I look at the, the sum rule for that, and notice my numerator is 2 tangent x over 1 minus tangent squared. So if I were going to use this to get at this value, instead of just going sine over cosine, well, let's see, tangent of x rise over run, y over x, negative 2 over root 5. And I'll just leave it like that uh, while I deal with it. OK, this is going to be pretty fraction intensive. So if I plug this in, I have 2 times negative 2 over root 5 over 1 minus 
negative 2 over root 5 squared. So in this numerator, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. So that numerator is going to be negative 4 over root 5. That denominator would be 1 minus, if I square this, negative 2 squared is 4. Square root of 5 squared is 5. 1 minus 4 fifths, think of this 1 as a 5 fifths. So this is going to be some tricky fraction work. And let's do this. This is this divided by that. So negative 4 over root 5 divided by 1 fifth is the same as multiplied by the reciprocal. Negative 4 over root 5 times 5 over 1. And now um, you could resolve this a couple of different ways. What, what I like to do is I like to think of this, this 5 as root 5 times root 5. And then one of these divides out one of these. And that just gives me the negative 4 root 5. Now if you don't see that, you could combine this up to a negative 4 times 5 over root 5. And notice if you go to rationalize the denominator, if you multiply by that, you end up with 4 times 5 times root 5 over 5. And, the, and then those 5s cancel out. I drop my negative. And it ends up being there. So anyways, uh, to get tangent, you can use this formula. Or you can, if you already know sine and cosine, just put sine over the top of cosine. So let's do another example. I know that cosine of some angle is negative 2 sevenths, and it's in quadrant 3. Makes sense, going back. So yeah, that'd be, that could be in quadrant 3. And I want to find cosine of 2x, sine of 2x, and tangent of 2x. So if I take this angle and double it, what will my cosine value what will my sine value, what will my tangent value be? And I'm always looking for exact answers um, on these types of problems. Let's do this cosine first. You know, with the cosine, I can pick any of these that I want to use. I don't even have to draw anything. Look, it's 2 times cosine uh, squared x minus 1. I could choose to use this formula because I just already know just what cosine is. Now, you don't have to do that. You could find sine and then use this. I just, I just chose to use it. So I will. Cosine is negative 2 sevenths. So if I square negative 2 sevenths, this is a positive 4 and a 49. And it's still minus 1. Um, the 2 is like 2 over 1, so 8 49ths minus 1. And so I'm going to think of this 1 as 49 49ths. So 8 minus 49 is negative 41. So cosine of twice that angle would be negative 41 49ths. To get that sine value, I am going to need both sine and cosine. So I'm going to sketch it out. It's in quadrant 3. And I know that the width is negative 2. And the hypotenuse is 7. X is negative 2. X is negative 2. R is 7. So sine, I can get those sine values by that y value by using Pythagorean theorem. So it looks like y squared is 45. So y would be the square root of 45. And I'm going to clean that 45 up a little bit. Rationalize this. 45 is 9 times 5. Those are both being square rooted still. So square root of 9 is 3. And square root of 5 is square root of 5. So this magnitude, the size of this, is 3 root 5. And it's going down, so it's, so it's negative. So that tells me what my sine value is. So if I want to get sine of 2x... I'm going to use this relationship right here, 2 times sine times cosine. And sine of the value, just found that. Cosine of it is that. That was given. And I'm going to do some multiplication here. So a negative times a negative is going to be positive. 2 times 3 times 2, 4, that's going to be, give me a 12. 12, root 5. 7 times 7 is 49, over 49. Great, so let me go from here. I'm going to get my tangent value. And I know that tangent is sine over cosine. Notice the, the 49ths are going to cancel out. It's going to end up being negative, uh, negative 12 root 5 over 41. And I got that by saying uh, sine over cosine. 
And I know the 40 ninths are going to cancel out. So negative 12 root 5 over 41. Now if I want to find the tangent value, I could go back to here and say tangent is rise over run, negative over a negative is positive, 3 root 5 over 2, and then I could plug it into this formula and get there. Yeah, let's do it. 2 times the tangent over 1 minus the tangent squared. So notice if I multiply this by 2, that cancels out, so that's kind of nice. 3 root 5 over 1 minus, if I square this, let's see, uh, 3 squared is 9, root 5 squared is 5, and 2 squared is 4. So this is going to be 45 fourths. Oof. And now if I think of this in terms of force, this is 4 fourths. So 4 fourths minus 45 fourths is negative 41 fourths. I'm going to clean this up a little bit. That divided by that is the same as that times this. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 12 root 5 over 41. I get to the same spot. Hey, let me do a double uh, check on these real quick. Cosine squared plus sine squared is supposed to be 1. So let me, let me try that. So my first one was negative 41. I don't really need to put the negative in there, but I'm just doing it for form. Or I'm not sure why I'm doing it. Plus, and then I'm going to square the other one. That was 12 root 5 divided by 49. I'm going to square that. A equals one and again that's not that's not proof it's just evidence but it's it's pretty good evidence we'll just do one more example we're given that uh, sine of x is negative three-fifths and it's in quadrant three and we're asked to find cosine of twice the angle sine of twice the angle and tangent of twice the angle and I'll start with cosine I'm gonna use this formula right here so cosine would be 1 minus 2 times sine squared. Negative 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. Think of this 2 as 2 over 1. So 1 minus 18 over 25. So if I think of this 1 in terms of 20 fifths, this would be 25 20 fifths. And 18, uh, 25 minus 18 is going to give me 7 of them. Now in order to get sine of twice the angle, I'm going to need both sine and cosine. So I'm going to have to sketch this sketch this one out and sine and cosine of the original angle. So it's in quadrant 3. Sine is negative 3 fifths. Down 3, hypotenuse is 5. And I can get this value right here by using that Pythagorean theorem. So it looks like x is 4, so this distance is 4, the magnitude but it's going back, it's going in a negative direction. So that is negative four. So that means that cosine would be negative four fifths. So as I go to find sine of two x, two times sine times cosine, where sine is negative three fifths, cosine is negative four fifths. I think of this two as just two over one. So it's gonna be over 25. Uh, two times three times four, 24. So sine of 2x should be 24, uh, 20 fifths. Sorry about that. Let's give this a double check on the calculator. 7 20 fifths and 24 20 fifths. Just make sure that if I square them and add them together, they equal 1. Yep, great. So I feel pretty good about those. So to get at tangent, I know that tangent sine over cosine, the 25ths will cancel up. Th this should end up in being 24 over 7 because the 25ths cancel out. If I write it out, it would be you know 24 over 25 divided by 7 over 25, the 25ths divide out. And again, to get tangent, if I wanted to use this rule, you know, if I didn't have sine and cosine, I only had the tangent value. I will need the tangent value. Tangent is rise over run. 
Negative by a negative is positive, so that would be 3 fourths. So this would be 2 times 3 fourths over 1 minus 3 fourths squared. 6 fourths over 1 minus, and if I square this, that's 9 sixteenths. And this 1, then I can think of as 16 sixteenths. So there's 6 fourths over 16 minus 9 is 7. You can start to see kind of the pieces start to pop into there. There's my 7 over 16. And now I have a fraction divided by a fraction. So I'm going to think of that as 6 fourths times the reciprocal of that, 16 sevenths. And I can do a little bit of division here. 4 goes into 16 uh, 4 times. 6 times 4 is 24. 24 sevenths. There it is. Whoops. So there's my, uh, there's my three values that I was looking for. And notice while you're doing double angle formulas, the formulas are pretty straightforward. Again, uh, like a lot of problems we've done so far, just pay careful attention to your sketch. Get your signs, S-I-G-N values right. Um, and then some fraction work, and you're there. Post questions in the forum and um, send message them to me if uh, if you'd rather not post them.